What are you waiting for? It's time to take action. It's time to do this. Don't overthink. Hit it strong. It's the Do This Podcast with your host, G.P. Terrio. Hey there, G.P. Terrio here with the Do This Podcast. Stop overthinking and do this. As we say, don't overthink, hit it strong. And I am so excited because this is podcast episode number one. And I've got a big time VIP guest on the podcast. I've got Jeff Crilly, who is the CEO of Real News PR. And he's also works with me and, and Jeff Welcome. Wow. I, I, first of all, such an honor. I mean, there's only one first. And for you to invite me to be your first guest, um, I'm truly honored. Well, it just makes yeah. complete sense. I mean, let's kind of give a quick uh, bio of who you are. I mean, you're an Emmy Award winning reporter. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that here. I mean, I grew up watching you here in Dallas. <laughs> don't say I Well, came, I didn't grow up. The, I, that, I, if I came to your elementary school, I do not want to know that. You Please. do not come to elementary school, so, so we'll make you feel good about that one. But also, let, you know, I want to share, and what we're really going to get into is, is about your book that you wrote. That you, I mean, you've sold or over six hundred thousand or sixty thousand plus, maybe yep, even yep, more, yep. Um, on, on PR. And here it is, right here, free publicity. And I can't wait to talk about that because that's kind of what jump started uh, where we are today. And then, obviously, where I'm sitting right now. This is your place. And this is, we're in the Oprah room. Just so you guys know, this is like for top, top podcasters. So I'm honored to be able to do my first episode here for the Do This Podcast. So again, thank you, Jeff. I can't tell you how honored I am. Well, well awesome. Well, we're going to have fun. Absolutely. This is kind of diff. I mean, first episode, you know, am I super nervous? I'm more excited than anything because I have you. And, and you said something earlier, it said your use of giving the interviews, but today I get to interview you. So how do you feel about that? It makes me uncomfortable because really? <laughs> I, I really I feel more comfortable interviewing people. In fact, I, I'm a, such a good um, host. I might switch it up on you and ask you a couple questions. <laughs> That's fine. We'll just kind of go back and forth again. This is we're just going to have fun with this. You know, again, you know, I want to stress, you know, what is this podcast about? You know, I, I tell people all the time, people know my brand as, hey, do this. And, you know, I really got to thinking about it. And people have been on me for a long time about why don't you do a podcast? And, you know, well, one, because it takes a lot of time and effort. And, and two, you know, the cost, what I have to do. And I came here to your set and did another podcast with another client of yours. And I saw how simple it was. And so I got to, um, I said, you know what? I want to do this. And then as we got to talking about what can we call the podcast, call it Do This. You gave that great advice. But let's even go more deep. What does do this mean? It means stop overthinking. Because there's so many people, they have all these great ideas, but they never do anything about it, right? Yes. And I love it that you are walking your talk because uh, he came in here and one thing led to another and he was like, let's go. And so I love it that you're living your brand. You know what? Somebody gave me great advice one time, said, count to three, one, two, three. If it feels right, do this. Yes. And I think, uh, to your point, a lot of people overthink things. They, they have this idea for an invention or a book or something like that. And then somebody else comes along and, and does it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right. And there's three kinds of people in the world. You've heard this before. Those that make it happen, those that watch it happen, and those who say, what just happened? <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is, you're absolutely right. Well, let's, let's get more in depth now. So obviously, here's your, your book. And when, when did you write this? Well, before we go there... You had this idea because you had a great career being, you know, a, a news broadcaster, you know, journalist, all that stuff. But then you wrote this book thinking, you know what, to tell people how to get on the media, bottom yes. line. And but that led even to the bigger picture. So can you kind of when we sure. first met, you kind of gave me your story of how this all came into play. Yes. So I, uh, I wrote the book. I, I never intended on leaving television news. I was just going to have a little side hustle. Uh, I went crazy on this book. I started to give 300 speeches a year for six straight years in addition to my TV job. So it was breakfast speech, lunch speech, go to work at Fox 4. Breakfast right. speech, lunch speech, go to work at Fox, Fox 4. I sold 70,000 copies of this $10 book. And the business was born because if you're signing that many books, they're either complaining about their PR firm or saying it's a do-it-yourself book. 
Jeff, I can't do this myself. Can I hire you? And I kept turning away the money, turning away the money, and at the ripe old age of 45, I said, you know, I think I have a second act. I think I would be a really good PR guy, and I could change the industry. I could, I could come up with the first all-journalist PR firm, and the reason we called it Real News PR is, is a message to the journalist. If we're pitching you, it's because it's real news. And I've been so proud of you because we've only been working together for a few weeks now, maybe two, two three, weeks. two weeks. Two weeks. And how many interviews have you done so far? Oh, gosh. So I've gotten, uh, let's see, I definitely have... Two Four, I think four news interviews plus two radio interviews. And these are yes. national, I mean, big time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I showed this one. One was in Cincinnati. And a buddy of mine that owns a real estate brokerage in Cincinnati, uh, Pivot, uh, and uh, Mark Perkins, shout out to you. But I reached out to him. He's like, dude, how did you get on that? Like, that, That's on <laughs> iHeartRadio. That's big time. So kudos to you. I knew I was like, all right, I'm, I'm with the right team Thank you. Uh, of, of, of what I want to accomplish on this whole, Thank you know, you. bringing awareness out there. People need to hear. Sure. But if anything, I think now more than ever is, is, is positivity because there's so much negative, even with me, you know, being with this podcast, do this podcast, but I also have a mortgage team and there's so much fear and negativity. So yes. I'm coming on these and bringing that positive, like, now it's time to still take advantage, buy all that. But but enough about me. Let's keep talking about you, though, on, you know, this great setup. I mean, this is just one set of how many here? We have seven on this floor. We have one at Grandscape up by Nebraska Furniture Mart, one in downtown Fort Worth. And we hope by the end of the year to have one in Austin. Okay. And so um, I'm a big fan of Do This. In fact, I got to tell you a, a funny story. I guess it wasn't funny, but... Uh, 25 years of news, that was my whole right. identity. Since right. I was a college kid, I was a news guy, right? And so I remember writing my letter of resignation in 2008, and my finger kind of hovered over the send button, because I knew if I press send, I can't take it back. Right. Uh, so it was a full minute that my finger hovered. And so I pressed send, and I, I was exhilarated and scared to death all at the same time. <laughs> Right. And then I just said, well, I, you know, nobody's going to pay the light bill but me. Mm -hmm. I guess I got to get busy. I guess I have to hustle. And year one, I had 10 clients. Second year, I had 20 clients. Pretty soon, it was more than I can handle. I had to start hiring people. In fact, uh, employee number one is sitting just down the hall from us. And so it's still with, it's still with us today. So, that. And that was 13 plus years ago. Uh, but this division that you're in right now, the podcast division, is actually something that my daughter came up with. And, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'm smart enough to listen to people and yeah. give people chances. And so my daughter, who is now my vice president, said to me four years ago, Daddy, we need to start a podcast division. And I laughed at her. This was before like everybody was right. into podcasting. Right. But four years ago, I said, Sarah, who listens to podcasts? And she says, Daddy, my generation does. Yep. The, those young people jogging on the Katy Trail, they're listening to st stuff. Sometimes it's not music. And so I said, OK, here's my credit card. Don't go crazy. And she spent about $2,000, nothing fancy, just you know, GoPros and you know, a board and some mics right. and headphones. And I noticed that the division was starting to take off, that, that people had a, a, a little ham in them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so they'd sit down, they'd talk on the mic, and they'd hear themselves really crisp on those headphones. And the next thing you know, the studios started to take off. And I said, wow, what if I spent some real money? So to date, we've spent about a million and a half dollars on television studios. And my goal is to have the prettiest studios this side of the Today Show, mm -hmm. where anybody with an idea for a show can come in, uh, get matched up with a producer, and they're off to the races as you are well and what i love when i came in here for that podcast it was here mm -hmm. and i remember when i walked in just the the presence you have here it's so professional i mean you had a like a, i call it the green room your break room but you had food laid out thank you you actually have a makeup room to where you really feel like holy crap i'm really this is like <laughs> the real deal right right, right. i remember sitting on the set and asking uh the person who was doing interviewing me for on their podcast and i was like how long have you been doing this i mean literally do you just show up and tape it and they're like that's it and i was like Thank you. Brilliant. Well, I hired all of these uh, former TV and radio people. So 
uh, the, the genius there is they don't get rattled. So guest comes in, guest says, hey, uh, or the podcaster says, I'm going to have two guests. They show up with five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a trip, typical production company would lose their mind. Oh. They're like, we're not set up for that. We right. don't have mics. And uh, our producers are just, hey, rock and roll. It's radio or television. It's yeah. another day in the life. And we'll grab some more cameras and grab some more mics and we'll, we'll go. I love it. And I want to throw it out there. So I actually have a producer. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm big time now and Trelvis hey Trelvis can you give us a shout out real fast hey man I am just enjoying the conversation <laughs> with you guys. so so Trelvis when I met you I love the name because when he said Trelvis Elvis is in his name it is in his name I love Elvis I was yes. like dude we are meant to be this is you are my producer and we're going to do this so yes. I've called him he's like my just he's going to chime in whenever you want Travis even though it's our first show we're still getting to know each That's other it. we're okay. going to have a good time though as we continue to build this do this podcast and when so. when Travis is not here he's on KKDA radio with um, DD in the morning which is a number one rated urban so, station Yeah. did y'all hear that so again not only I mean he's just not any producer he's no. already on radio Travis, come on, give us something like who you are. Uh, why am I so lucky to have somebody like you? Well, I, you know what? The, the pleasure is actually mine, man. I feel like the, the podcast is going to bring some good insight to anybody who checks it out. So the pleasure is actually mine. It's not you having me. It's me having you. Or it can even be us having each other. There you, know you know go. I mean? and, and I wish y'all could see. One thing we're going to work on is get a camera on him next time because yep. he is this beautiful man that y'all all need to see. <laughs> he is. I mean, about the name Trelvis, even probably, oh, we're going to see if he's got some Elvis moves in hey, him I, too. I've heard I got a face for radio, so I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get back to sure. Hey, appreciate you, Travis, and thanks for getting this all set up. So all this stuff you see is, I mean, your team is outstanding. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I think your show is so timely because, you know, we're hearing uh, rumors of a recession. Right. And the time to get busy is now. This is not the time to be fearful and put your head under the mattress. I mean, you just need to get busy. I, I, I love that you said that. And, you know, people say, you know, marketing, PR, all that stuff, that's the first thing people pull back on. Yes. To me, that is when you got to go even all in. Yes. Because we're going to rise to the top and people are going to see Sure. They need to hear the positivity, and and there's always look recession. I've been you know doing mortgages for over 20 years, and I've seen the ups and downs. And guess what? I had better success during those slow yes. times because I'm hustling harder, yes. helping my clients, educating them, and having fun with it. And in your industry, it really weeds out all the people who got into it because they thought it would be easy. You know, last year they were selling oh, yeah. life insurance, oh, now yeah. they're doing mortgages, yeah. and it weeds all those people out, yeah, yeah. which is healthy for the for the industry. It is so much, so much. Well, let me ask you this: so you got this great PR podcast. You know, being, you know, getting me, especially on like all the news media and stuff, where do you see this type of industry because of social media? There's so many people now that can just start their own YouTube channel, start yep, their own yep. podcast. So do you think the news media could be a dying breed where, you know, am I going to benefit from being on the news or am I better off trying to get on other podcasts? So that's a very good question. So uh, the news is not dead, but it's slowly dying. I mean, when I was a kid, we watched Walter Cronkite. There were four channels and I had a little black and white TV, so I couldn't get all of them in crisp. Yeah. <laughs> but you, there was- You look way uh, yeah. too young to be watching black and white TV. <laughs> well, we, we did get color when I was, I was, in, when say, I was you, in third you, you grade or something like that. You're taking some really good vitamins that I need to know about afterwards. So, so anyway, there was like, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS, and then PBS where we watched Watched, you know, Electric Company and, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Uh, now there's a bazillion channels. Right. And, and these days, if you go home, I mean, I know some people who don't even watch like traditional television. They're just watching YouTube and Netflix and don't even pay attention to right. traditional television. So uh, I'm a big fan of Wayne Gretzky, the hockey great. He was asked one time, why are you such a great hockey player? He says, it's easy. Everybody else is skating to the puck. I'm skating to where the puck is going to be. Yeah. And I'm confident that it's shows like this that is going to be the future. As your show begins to grow an audience, we're show number mm -hmm. one, but you will grow an audience and you may beat local television news in terms of the, the number of eyeballs. Right. So I think the future is what we're doing right now, bringing a perfect 
professionalism to podcasting. Because the truth is a lot of the people who start podcasts, they just want to be the host. They want to mm -hmm. be the talent. They don't want to be the tech. Right. They don't want to edit and upload and, and push buttons. I mean, one of the reasons why you and I are able to have a great conversation right now is Travis is doing all the hard work. That's right. He's making sure the audio is right. He's making sure that we're framed correctly. And we've had podcasters come to us who say, man, I interviewed Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup for the Soul for an hour. Right. And after the interview was over, I looked down and I forgot to press record. And, and at that point, you can't even go back to no. you know, Mark Victor Hansen and say, can we do a redo? Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> you can't even right. tell him right. that he wasted an hour of his life. Yeah. And so we feel like most people want kind of done for you podcasting. It, exactly why I'm here. Because I can't tell you, people have been telling me for over a year, do a podcast. But you know what I've learned is, Stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. I'm good at mortgages, getting people in homes, right? But I've always wanted to do a podcast. And so you hire the experts. I have no problem of working with the experts. Because that's the other thing. I find people like they're so tight. They don't understand like what it's costing them by not investing in something like this yes. or, or just anything in life. You know, the return will be there. Now, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. This is like you said, this is episode number one. Yes. We've got to build this to 100 episodes. I can't wait when I have the 100th episode and have the big. So I'll bring you back as the guest on the 100th episode. <laughs> I there would we love go. that. We'll, we'll we have a party. Yeah. Well, I want to brag about uh, GP because he has. Hold up your notes. You only, oh, well, you only have written yeah, like not, four not lines. Lot. There is no teleprompter. <laughs> we have teleprompters, but you're not using one. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of born to do this, aren't you? I love it. And you know, it's funny you say that. My, my uh, partner on my team, he's like, I, when I came back from my interview here, I said, I told him what I was doing. He's like, you did what? I was like, but then he took a pause. He's like, that's you though, man. You belong on the stage. Your ability to just tap dance. That's what we call it in TV news. Yeah. Tap dancing. Because, yeah. you know, you would, you'd be standing there and you'd throw to a, a, a package is what we called it. A, right. You know, a, a pre-recorded thing. And they would say in your ear, uh, hey, Krilly, stretch. We don't have the package. And then all of a sudden, it's all me right. doing a little soft shoe, trying right. to fill some time. Uh, so you've got that gift of gab. Uh, can I s turn it around on you? Have you always had this gift of gab? I, mean, I think I have, and that's where I think the do this comes from. You know, and I've just always had that positive, just energy. You know, I've always been in leadership roles. I mean, yes. from you know being a quarterback on my football team, an officer in the army, and people always ask, where did do this come from? And literally would come when I was in the huddle with my guys, my teammates and saying, okay guys, do this, do this, here we go, we're gonna wow. do this. And I've just carried that mantra with me everywhere I've gone. And the military probably fine-tuned that for you because, I mean, when you had to wake up at, you know, oh, 0600 or... <laughs> zero, zero, 0600 was formation. <laughs> right, and uh, on time is late, right? You uh, show up, you're punctual. Yeah. I know anytime I schedule a tour with somebody who's a veteran, uh, and I say two o'clock, yeah. they're here at, at 155. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they really, that's ingrained in you. Oh, if you're on, if you, if you come on time, you're late. Yes. Is what I tell yes. people. So Very yeah, cool. always Very be cool. 10 minutes early minimum. So thank yeah. you. Well, I think what you're doing here with your brand and uh, you, he has so much charisma. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> folks. He's born, born to do this. And I'm so proud of you for all the radio well, interviews and television interviews. You. I'm excited. Yeah. And I, so I've got one last question is, it, well, t two to follow up. So one, I want to know who you're favorite interview was that you've done because I, I know you've interviewed a lot you know who is somebody famous or who's the one that just stands out is that you could interview over and over or just one your favorite who's, who's one of your favorites uh i'll tell you who i was completely starstruck by is in my first market which was lansing michigan i got a chance to interview captain kangaroo do you remember wow, captain, captain kangaroo, kangaroo yes <laughs> so, i mean the thing about interviewing a guy like uh bob keishan i think is okay uh, his, was his name um is your formative, your formative years when you're, you know, three and four, and you're watching Captain Kangaroo. Yeah. I mean, he's he's kind of a god to you. Yeah. And yeah, so then, yeah. as an adult, I probably was 20 years old when I interviewed him. I was just in awe. And then I noticed as I looked around, everybody else, all the other adults, were the same way because he had been on television for three decades, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Right? Do you remember yeah. that? Yes, that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, if I had to. Put, you know, when was I truly starstruck? It would be him. I also I got to interview Fonzie uh, oh, from Fonz. Happy yes, from Happy, Happy Days. Days. Oh my gosh! A truly nice guy. I got to cover uh, the, the first Super Bowl of the '90s when the Cowboys uh, won. Okay. Do you remember this uh, in the Rose Bowl? Uh, and Troy? I got to interview. Uh, let's see, uh, Garth Brooks sang the national yes. anthem, so I got to interview him. 
got to interview uh, Henry Winkler, the Fonz. Yes. Uh, and I got to interview John Travolta, who happened wow. to be in the stands. That's great. And uh, so, yeah, I got to interview a lot of stars and had a good career, but I'm enjoying this so much better because I get to work with my kids and cool people like you. Well, real fast, so yeah. your kids, you mentioned your, your daughter. I also know you have your son because I've, yes. I've already worked with your son on some things. Yes. Is there anybody so, in the other family? Uh, so I have a grandson now who just discovered that grandpa's business is cool because he's been, you know, fooling around with right. a little podcast for a few years. Well, he goes to uh, Keller uh, ISD. Okay. And one of the, the classmates saw him on his little television show and said, man, you got your own TV show? And now he thinks this grandpa's, grandpa's company cool. is cool. That's so, right. So when uh, some days uh, my daughter will bring him here and when our reception at the receptionist at the front desk is on break, he'll sit there right behind the reception desk and he'll get up from behind the reception desk, shake you, shake your hand, look you straight in the eye Good. and he'll say, my name is Caleb Hill, future owner of this company. I love it. <laughs> he, he has that do this attitude. He does. Stop he does. Overthinking. <laughs> okay. So one, one last thing, we talked about your favorite. Now I know one of my favorite all time motivational speakers that I've never gotten to see in person. I've wanted to, but I, I, I have followed, read his books is Les Brown. I got to interview Les Brown. I know Brown. you did. did. You I know? watched it. I yes. watched it. And, and one of my heroes. That? Uh, well, tell the story yeah. as you, how you got to interview him, how you got, you, sure. this is a do this story. So I want so, to so, hear this. Uh, when I started to speak to sell the book, I, I knew I had to learn from the greats. And so a, a friend of mine at channel four said, uh, have you heard of Les Brown? And I said, I've heard of him, but I don't know much about him. He says, go to YouTube, start watching Les Brown, because right. he's truly one of the most amazing, you know, vibrant speakers yes. of all time. So I started to watch all these Les Brown YouTube videos to the point where I could, I could, you know, memorize some of his classic stories. Right. And a friend of mine, Cheryl Jackson, uh, you'd like her. She needs to be on your show. Okay. Her nickname is Cheryl Axon Jackson, and she runs Minnie's Food Pantry in Plano. So okay. I'll, Perfect. I'll introduce you. Perfect. Uh, she's also a person of action. So she calls me up one morning. She says, Les Brown is uh, at the Anatole and we're going to go meet him. I said, we are? And she says, yeah, get in the car, Crilly. I'll meet you at the Anatole in 45 minutes. And so we meet at the Anatole. We're wandering all over the Anatole trying to find him. Finally, we uh, go to the concierge desk and say, we're looking for, for Les Brown, the motivational speaker. And the concierge says, I think I saw him and his daughter having breakfast in the restaurant. And so Cheryl and I kind of creep up like little kids, like right. sneaking up on, on uh, Santa. Right, right, right. <laughs> and we kind of peer and we're both kind of nervous because this is our hero. Right, right. And so uh, she says, come on, Krilly, just do this. Right, right. <laughs> so we come out there and when I meet eyes with Les Brown, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I just instantly bent down and I started doing the I'm not worthy on the floor oh of the restaurant goodness. and he seemed embarrassed and he had that big last brown yes, smile right. and so he says come on get off the floor come come have lunch with us and or breakfast with us and so I sat there with him and his daughter and Cheryl and and so then years later I got a chance to interview him uh, he's in Atlanta and yep. and so we zoomed him in on my television show yep. but I reminded him of that I said you won't remember this he says oh yeah I do remember that I don't get a lot of people bowing Yes. down at my feet right. in, in a public space That's awesome. so it was a wonderful interview that's awesome yeah i, I just love that Thank you. um so, God, there's just so much we could continue just talking about. But again, thank you so much. You bet. This yeah. was wonderful. I mean, it was awesome. And I'm excited to where this is going to go, thank do you. this. Thank and you. Um, so what, what advice can you give to anybody that, you know, has been sitting on the, the sideline? They have these great ideas. Yes. You know, what, what, what advice can you give for, for your success? So I would say, uh, like the carpenters do, measure twice, cut once. Because if you just are impulsive and, oh, gosh, I'm going to become a brain surgeon. Right. I mean, you've got to think this stuff out. Right. So right. Uh, if you're thinking about doing something, ask somebody who's already done it. Find out, you know, is, is this thing that I'm thinking about doing uh, worth quitting my job for? Is it worth dedicating the time it would take for this thing to be successful? Yeah. Ask others who have already done it. And then if you have a burning desire, if you just cannot go to sleep at night, you cannot get it out of your mind, I think you need to do this. I love it. Yeah. That is great advice. Well, thank you again, <laughs> you Jeff. Bet. This is awesome. I mean, this has just been just so much fun. Yes. And I can't wait. The 100th episode. 100, I'm, I'm coming back. You're coming back. <laughs> I'll bring the but, cake. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, thank you all. Podcast number one, 
do this. Stop overthinking and do this. So please go out there, share this podcast. People need to hear this because I guarantee you, they see somebody like Jeff, they know, hey, I can do this. So hey, I challenge you to go out there and do this.